So I was chatting with a Fiddlehead student at a recent office hours and she said that it's really challenging for her to go from low second finger to third on the G string. And what can she do to get over this and be able to do that? So I made this video to help her and maybe you to overcome that challenge. So she's not the only one who struggles with that. That's quite a stretch and it's very awkward. So the first tip I'll give to you to work with is to practice going from low second to third on easier strings. So see if you can do it on the E string, which is going to be a lot easier. And if you can do that, then you're in great shape because it means you can slowly and gradually do that on harder strings like the A. D and G. And by the way, that could be a good exercise for you eventually is to sequence that exercise across all the strings. And even make it fun and add a rhythm. Okay, so another tip to help you get this when playing low second to third on the G string is to bring your elbow in. So rock it to your right or inward. I like to think of it. And then when playing on the E, it'll naturally go out. So a great strategy is to practice motions without even making sound. Just see if you can really learn it. Really, your arm can, you're not even having any music happen. You're putting all your attention on the motion. This is a great practice. You can do it with lots of things. You can do it with kind of figuring out fingering things and even bowing things without making a sound. Okay, so I recommend doing that. It'll help you reach um, that third finger. It'll also help you with the other fingers like the fourth or the raised third on the G string. Okay, so another thing that will help you is to lift the fingers when you're playing the third, third finger. So lift the other fingers. Normally when we play, and when we, especially when we play scales, we keep the fingers down. This is a good practice. It helps you to play a lot faster. But in some cases, if you're a beginner or struggling with a particular thing, it may be a good idea to temporarily, as a learning step, to not hold down those fingers. So you could play open, one, low two, and then three, lifting the two. And then continue alternating between low two and three. Lifting the low two when you play three. So here's a pitfall of that, is that your second finger might get dragged sharp, slowly, and then, or the, third finger will be dragged flat. So I've developed this method of helping violinists play in tune called drone tuning. And basically what you do is you tune particular notes with a drone. So start by trying to really keep that low second finger, which is B flat in tune, and do it with a B flat drone. But keep playing low second to third. keep lifting for now. Eventually you'll have more flexibility. Okay, and then the, you can also tune the third finger, which is C, with a C drone. It's cool that you can use, play the same exercise, two different drones, and each drone helps you with a different note. Okay, so just two more tips for you to help you figure this out. Use guitar position. Hold it like a mandolin or a guitar and then play the same notes. It will be easier. So most of the time in playing situations, performance situations, you wouldn't do this. But playing in guitar position is a great practice tool for figuring out musical problems. And it may just unlock something. Remember that your fingers have a kind of intelligence to them, and so you're helping them solve the problem. You're giving them more data 
by doing it this different way. And then after you've done that, see if you can maybe pluck and do it in violin position. And you may not be able to, but playing in guitar position can unlock things for you. So the last thing I wanted to say was that my student was saying that she has some kind of injury and when she goes from low second to third, it's kind of painful. And so it's important to say that you shouldn't fight through that kind of pain. We're not doing hit workouts. We're not trying to get buff and impress our friends here. We're, we're trying to play music. And if you fight your way through some kind of painful thing that's an, an injury, you may make it worse, which means you won't be able to play for longer. So let's find a different solution. So an unconventional idea is to not use third finger, but use fourth or your pinky which is a lot more natural. This may help people with other injuries, with arthritis, different things like that. Now I know all the uh, violin teachers who are watching this right now are shaking their fist at me. That's not the way you do it! And they're right. But sometimes you have to do something unconventional if you have a real obstacle. Now, if you don't have any kind of pain or any, I, I recommend trying to train yourself to do it with third finger. But if you're really stuck, maybe the fourth finger will be a good solution. Remember that there are some great musicians who had physical limitations, like Django Reinhardt didn't have an index finger on his left hand, and he figured out his own weird way to play. So sometimes you have to do that. So anyway, those are some tips for this kind of particular problem that violinists and fiddlers face. I hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching Fiddlehead. See you soon. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.